Hello, Rebels, and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin, and today we're going to start our solo playthrough of Star Wars Rebellion using the fan-made variant on BGG. I am recording this right after I did the setup video, so if there's anything I did substantially wrong in the last setup video, I'll be putting it up as subtitles right now, so make sure to have them on. They're the Klingon subtitles. No, that's not a joke. That's an actual thing. Turn to the Klingon channel, and then you'll see my notes. It's pretty nice. With that, are you guys ready to wreak some havoc? Let's do it. Just like many Fantasy Flight games, the game is set up in sets of phases. We're going to start in the assignment phase. Now, what I have here are the solo rules for the Empire. So first, the Empire will assign leaders and undertake missions simultaneously during the command phase. So we don't have to worry about picking missions for the Empire yet. That'll happen in the next phase. What we need to do for this phase is just draw a specified number of mission cards from the mission table over here and place them in a face down pile and we'll shuffle them up forming the initial missions deck. Also, the Empire plays all action cards designated as playable during the assignment phase. So you can see here in turn one, it says we are going to have two missions, one starting mission and one main mission. Here's our starting missions. We'll give them a shuffle and we'll pick this one and we'll draw the top card of the starting missions deck. Then we'll shuffle these two up and these are the two missions that the Empire will try and complete this round. We do have our brilliant administrator card that can be played during the assignment phase. It says place this leader in any Imperial system then place units on the build queue using this system's resource icons and number. Gross! This has to be done in an Imperial system, so I'm going to use Corellia because here we get some of the best units that we can place on our build queue. If you look here, this tells us where we place them on the build queue. We'll place them in spot 3, and we're going to produce these types of units. In the base game, production is very simple for the Empire. You would just look here, we only have one type of uh, ship that we can make with this icon, and that's a TIE Fighter. And we can only make a Star Destroyer with this uh, blue square. But with the expansion, we now have the new TIE Striker. So what I'm going to do, and this isn't in the solo rules specifically, because like I said, the solo rules are only for the base game. I'm playing with the expansion. The first time we ever build with one of these symbols, we'll always do one of the expansion ones. So this TIE Striker, we're going to build that, and we're going to build a Star Destroyer. On the side of the board, they have a location here for you to place your build queue units. When you place them here, we're placing these in the third queue. At the end of each round, they're going to move up one. When they move off of this one space, you can deploy them. Now, technically, on the other side of the board, a little bit farther, we would put the rebel ones, but I'm just going to put everything on this side since I'm facing the board as if I'm the Imperial player, even though we're playing as a rebel. It's just so that all the names are facing you guys, so you're not looking at names upside down. Now we get to select our missions that we would like our leaders to complete. Now, I want to make a note here. If you're playing this competitively, the Rebel player always picks their missions first and then the Empire. But since we don't even know what those missions are, I just did them first because we're just picking random ones since we're playing an AI. But if you're playing competitively, the Rebel player chooses first and then the Empire chooses second. Why that's important is because any leaders that you're not using for missions, you can use them to oppose certain things that the uh, enemy is doing. So that's why it's important that the rebels do their choosing of missions first, and then the Empire can see, oh, well, they don't have any leaders left in their leader pool. I can do missions with no worries about them trying to oppose them. I've chosen these four missions, and we'll go through them in detail during the next phase. One other thing to note, when you're playing this competitively, these mission cards will be upside down, right? So your enemy or your opponent does not know what those missions are. Since I'm just playing this solo, I'm going to have them face up so I don't have to keep looking at them, <laughs> flipping them over. But yeah, that's how you'll have them when you're playing competitively. We've completed the assignment phase. Now we move to the command phase. For the AI Empire, the Empire always completes initial missions before activating systems for movement. So this is different when you're playing competitively. You don't know if the uh, Empire is going to move or to do a mission. Well, they always do missions first. What you'll do, we'll flip over the top mission card from the deck and assign the best qualified leader or the pictured leader, if we have them, for that mission. If that mission is unplayable, then you just simply shuffle it back into the mission deck and draw a new one. 
Then we have the select mission location based on either the Empire's card decision making list or the system with the highest production value. Production value is based on what that system can produce. If it can produce stronger units, it's going to be more, it's going to be a higher production value uh, system. Now, there is a chance that they also could try and oppose the rebel missions. This will only happen if there are more Imperial leaders than unrevealed initial mission cards. The Empire may issue an order, you roll a d6 and on a 4+, plus, they can send their best qualified leader to oppose a rebel mission. If no leader has the matching skill icons, the leader with the fewest total number of skill icons becomes eligible. And you'll see how opposing works as we play. In the command phase, the rebels always go first, so they'll start with their first mission. So what we're going to do is infiltration. On the upper left hand side, this tells us what type of leader we can use for this mission. We have to have at least one intel icon. You can always send one or two leaders for a mission if you would like. We're assigning Jan Dondana, who has a total of two of the intel icons, so he can do this mission. Attempt in any system that contains an Imperial unit. If successful, look at the top two cards of the objective deck. Place one card on the top of the deck and the other on the bottom. Just helps us do a little bit of digging. And down here, we can see this is one of our starting missions, and after doing it, we'll place this card back into our hand. I can pick any Imperial system that I'm going to do this infiltration, and I'm going to choose Salakami. There's a couple reasons for that. The biggest reason is because if the Empire does decide to oppose me on this and they place a leader here, this entire system can no longer have movement. So we cannot move these units out of here for the Empire. I'm just trying to slow them down. I really don't want them to take out Mon Calamari up here. I'm hoping I can take control of that and start gaining those resources. The Empire still has four leaders in his leader pool, so he could potentially try and stop me or oppose me. What we're going to do is we're going to roll a d6. On a 1 through a 3, he's just going to let me get the intel. Because if he does not oppose it, I automatically succeed. I don't have to roll dice at all. If he opposes me, then I have to roll dice and get more successes than he does. So a 1 through a 3, he's just going to let it be. 4 through a 6, he's going to try and oppose. 1 through a 3. Yeah, he's going to go get that intel. I don't care. We'll draw the top two cards of the objective deck. Start of the refresh phase. Play if at least four rebel systems contain a rebel unit. Hmm, that might be a little hard. Or start of the refresh phase. Play if at least three imperial systems contain either a sabotage marker or a rebel unit. Yeah, I think cut supply lines will be able to do that a little more easily. So I'm going to place this one on the bottom of the objective deck. Now we'll move over to the Empire and we'll reveal their first mission. Capture Rebel Operative, of course. <laughs> See, this is what I mean. I just, I love how this works. It's so thematic. Okay, they totally let us get that intel. They knew Jan Donanum was going to go there and they go, <laughs> we're going to capture him. Attempt against a Rebel leader that is in a system that contains an Imperial unit. If successful, capture the leader. So we are going to send their best leader with the most amount of fight. And you can imagine who that is going to be. If you're thinking, you're right, Darth Vader. I think I am going to try and oppose this, so I'm going to send General Riken there. We're only going to get to roll one die, and Darth Vader will roll three. But as long as we get equal to or more successes than Darth Vader, then we stave off this capture. I've placed both Darth Vader and General Riken here in this same system. Now let's say Jan Dodanan had any sort of fight himself. If he had that skill, we'd also get to add it to our role. Same as if the Empire had any other leaders in this location, they add their skills as well. Unfortunately, we don't have any more, so it's going to be three dice to one die. We all know how Fantasy Flight is and their own unique dice, so we do have our unique dice here. We have a direct hit, which with a mission is a one success. We have a regular damage, which is also considered a one success for a mission. We also have a tactics or two lightsabers. That's considered two successes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll all these dice together. Ours is this one red and these three black are four Darth Vader. Can we resist Darth Vader? Oh, <laughs> we can. Look, we have two successes. He has two. Because we're the defender, we win. And that means nobody is captured. Yeah. Now we move back to us. And because they just pulled out their strongest leader, 
Let's do a sabotage. Attempt in any system. If successful, you may destroy a shield bunker in the system. If the system is populous, you may instead place a sabotage marker in this system. When you place a sabotage marker, they first of all can't place any units in that location and they don't produce those icons so they can build more units. So that's awesome. It's like a double whammy. Now you can see Saw Guerrera has one large fist and then two small ones. The large fist constitutes your regular dice. Those two small ones, we get to roll two green dice. And don't forget, those are four out of six are blank. Two of them are just a direct hit. So we're taking a risk, but I think we should do it. I think a great place to sabotage is Corellia. If we could make it so they don't get to build a Star Destroyer every time they build, yeah. The Imperials still have three leaders and only one mission left, so they potentially could try and block this or oppose it. One. No, nope, they're not going to. They're just going to leave it be. Although the Empire decided not to place another leader here, here's the thing. General Moff Tarkin is here. So that means we still have to roll dice for a success. We have to get one success to do this sabotage. Tarkin doesn't have any fight value or skills, so... The Empire won't roll any dice, so we're just looking for one success. One red and two green is what we're going to roll. Oh, thank you. We have two successes. So we get to sabotage Corellia. We'll place this marker here to remind ourselves that they do not gain that production. Now we move back to the Empire, and we have secret weapons research. And this says resolve. So see that? That means that no matter what, even if we had leaders in our leader pool to oppose, we cannot oppose this card. Resolve in any Imperial system, draw two project cards. Ow! So I've got the two project cards here. And how these are going to work is at the end of this round, when we shuffle up the mission deck, we're going to place these two on top. So I'm not going to look at them because I don't want to know what they are. But they're going to activate next round. Gross! The Imperials need a leader with a logistics icon, and they've got it with General Tay. And we can do this in any Imperial system, so we're just going to do Corellia. Now we're back to the Rebels, and we have Build Alliance. We need at least one Diplomacy, and we have two with Princess Leia. Attempt in any populous system, if there are Rebel units in this system, roll two additional dice. If successful, gain one loyalty in this system. <laughs> that is awesome. We're going to try our hand at this at Utapau, because if we can gain loyalty here, we could probably hold this at least for a while before the Empire takes it from us, and that would allow us to get a Moncali cruiser every time we produce. <laughs> that would be sweet. Because that was an attempt card, the Empire can try and oppose. And yeah, I don't blame them. They really should try and oppose that one. They're going to send Emperor Palpatine, and he has three diplomacy. So we're only going to roll two dice. The Empire's going to roll three. Whenever we're doing these mission resolutions, I'm going to try and have the Rebels be red and the Empire's be, Empire be black. Unless we don't have enough dice, and then I'll do them individually. But so here's our two to the three for Emperor Palpatine. Oh, man, we have to beat them. Ooh, one, two, three, but one, two, three, four. Yeah, Senator Palpatine is just too good. The Empire has one leader left, General Veers, and they have no missions, so now they can do a move action. Dale has some rules for movement. How he makes his determination of movement is that the uh, Imperials are always trying to move towards the PRBI, which is the probe card not yet obtained on remote systems. I totally think it makes sense. However, sometimes I feel like what happens with the Empire is they leave obvious things where they could take out some of my production. So what I like to do is I like to roll a D6. On a 1 through a 3, they decide to go towards one of the remote systems to see if our rebel base is there. On a 4 through a 6, they're going to look to see if maybe they can take over some of my uh, loyalty areas or where I have units just to try and mess me up a little bit. So I am doing a little bit of a variant on this, um, but know that if you want to play it specifically to the solo rules that Dale made, you can just print this out and follow this along. So I already forgot which way I said this. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is on a 1 through a 3, they're going to go towards a remote system. On a 4 through a 6, they're going to look to try and interrupt our loyalties and our production. 
four through six, they're going to try and take out our loyalty or trying to get the most production for themselves. So the two systems that the Empire can reach that are mine are Kashyyyk over here that allow us to gain two ground units during production. Or we have Naboo over here where we get a ground unit and an air unit. Generally, I'd have them move into the location that gives them more or higher production, but since both of them are doing ground units or the basic space units, I'm going to roll a d6. On a 1 through a 3, it's going to be Kashyyyk. On a 4 through a 6, it's going to be Naboo. Yeah, it's Naboo. That's kind of what I think it was thinking it should be anyways. How movement works is we place our leader in the system that we want to move to. Then in any adjacent regions or systems that we have units, we can move them into that planet. And because of Utapau right over here, I'm going to have the Empire essentially bring everything they've got. <laughs> so from over here, we're going to have this Star Destroyer come over here. The Star Destroyer can hold a total of six land units and TIE Fighters can't move from system to system. They're not strong enough, so they also have to be carried. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So he can carry all five of these into Naboo. Okay. Now, over here in Sullust, we're also going to send the Star Destroyer over here. That Star Destroyer can hold six. So we've got two more TIE Fighters. We've got an ATST, and we're going to have a Storm Trooper. But if I remove this last Stormtrooper from Sullust, this location would no longer be subjugated. So in any subjugated system, the Empire will always leave at least one, their weakest ground unit, to protect it. So then that way they can continue to gain that production. And now if you look at this, two Star Destroyers over here on Naboo. Yeah, Utapau, I was thinking I could protect it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. Here's the thing, though. Because we did this mission last, this is going to go unattested, and I really am excited about that. Establish trade relations. Attempt in any system that does not contain a sabotage marker. If successful, gain one loyalty in the system and place units on the build queue using this system's resource icons and number. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Mon Matha come here. Awesome. Now, technically, because the Empire, the Emperor is here, Palpatine, we are going to have to roll dice. But this card has Mon Matha's uh, picture on it. We have an automatic two successes, plus we're going to roll three, four, five dice to the three of Emperor Palpatine. I'm going to use these two green dice as our automatic su successes since we're using Mon Matha. Here's R5. Here's the three for Senator Palpatine. Oh, this would be great. We could get a Mon Calamari right now. Put it in Q3. Okay, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four. Yeah, we succeeded. This honestly is pretty fantastic because what we're going to do is we're going to gain a loyalty here as well. So during the production, we'll also produce this. If you think about it, it totally makes sense. Who's going to say no to Mon Mothma and Princess Leia, even if Senator Palpatine's there? <laughs> so we get to pick one of these two to build, and we get the Mon Calamari Cruiser. And if you look at this Mon Calamari, we get to roll a black die and two red dice, and it has a total of four freaking health. <laughs> awesome. I think we're going to go with the Frigate because it has three health and gets to roll two green dice so it can hit a lot more things. And of course, we have our Mon Calamari. Look at that ship! <laughs> How I know I need to place that on build Q3 is because of that number right there. Some locations will have a 2 or a 1. That will tell you where in the build queue you place your units when you produce them there. Now we're going to move to the refresh phase. And honestly, there isn't anything too terribly different for the Empire other than how they do buildings, which we'll do that in shortly. But And also the recruiting, they're just going to draw one action card. And as long as there's a leader on it, we'll take that one and we'll recruit that leader. For the refresh phase, the first thing is we'll all retrieve our leaders that are out on the board. Then just the rebel players will draw two mission cards. Then we'll draw two probe cards for the uh, Empire. We get to draw one objective, which we know what that is, and then we'll move into the advancing time marker, the recruiting, building, and deploying of units. Let's draw our two missions. We have Behind Enemy Lines. Oh, I love that card. And we have Support of Mon Calamari. Yes! We can maybe get another one of those ships.
Next is the probe cards. So we draw two of them. Malastare is the first one. That couldn't have our rebel base on it anyways because it's populous. So we'll just discard that. And then Utapau. Well, <laughs> that's where a lot of our fighting, or not fighting, but diplomacy fighting was. And yeah, our base couldn't be there anyways either, just for the solo rules. We'll draw our one objective card, and we know what it is. Play if at least three imp Imperial systems contain a sabotage marker or a rebel unit. We have sat, well, no, we didn't. Yeah, we did. We sabotaged Karelia. So we've got one down, two to go. I totally forgot to talk to you guys about this. You see Naboo? And you see how there are Imperial units in this, uh, Imperial ground units in this system? It's subjugated. So they will now gain this production, and we don't gain any production from Naboo. I would say overall that was a great round for us, so we're going to move the time track to two. But here's the thing. We still have to last all the way to 15 rounds, and we're never going to be able to outproduce the Empire. I mean, come on. So since we're here, though, we get to recruit a new leader, and we get to build units. The Empire will gain a new leader, and their leader will be this one, Suntir Fell. I've never even heard of that one. <laughs> this is an assignment, so they'll do this during the assignment phase. Place this leader in any system, then move up to four TIE Fighters from any systems to this system, ignoring transport restrictions and adjacency. If there are rebel ships in this system, resolve a combat. Oh man, that's going to stink. We get to draw two and pick one. So we either have Target the Star Destroyers, ooh, or we have Undercover. Oh, we get Obi-Wan Kenobi. I think I'm going to go with Undercover, and I'm going to grab Obi-Wan Kenobi because I love his intel. Now, one of the things that people complain the most about this game is just how much work you have to do to determine building units. So there's an app that I love and I use religiously for this. I will put a link in the description below or notate the name of it. You can find it on um, either Google Play or on the Apple, whatever Apple is, because I don't use Apple, sorry. <laughs> but what you can do here is, so if I go into the Rebels, I can show where I have loyalty. And then, oh, I should have, this is loyal. So I have these four locations that are loyal, but I have enemy troops in this location, so I cannot produce here. So when I hit this little button here, it tells me where I can place my units and where they go on the production queue. So I get a bunch in the one location and then two in the three location, which is really, really nice. For the... Um, for the Empire, we have here, you can see these light gray places are locations that are subjugated. The black locations, the darker, are the ones that are loyal. And then these red locations are locations we've sabotaged. And how you can place that something sabotaged is you go here and you click on which locations the uh, rebels have sabotaged. So freaking cool how you can do this. So I'm going to produce these units and the Imperials are going to produce only these units. So if you look right now, we're actually producing better than the Imperials. It won't last long, but hey, I'll take it. So for land units, I'm going to have one assault tank and then two stormtroopers and then one ATST that I'm going to put in the one region. In the two region, I'll just put a single stormtrooper and then nothing in the third region. For us in location three of the build queue, we're going to have one Karelian Corvette and a Mon Calmari cruiser. <laughs> that is just awesome. Then we're going to produce one U-Wing, and then we'll do four Rebel Troopers. One, two, three, four. Yep. And, you know, instead of doing four Rebel Troopers, we're going to do two Rebel Troopers and two Rebel Vanguard, because I love those green dice. In the solo game, the AI, or the Empire, is the first to place their units. They're going to look at production value. So this Naboo is going to have two more units placed here because, you know what, they're going to be looking at taking out Utapau or something like that. Who knows what they're going to do, but they're going to place two units here. Why I'm doing two is because you can never have, you can never deploy more than two units per system. And you can never deploy units in a system that either A, has an opponent's unit either in space or on the land, and B, is sabotaged. The other two ground units are going to come over here to Sullust. Because you can see, Solist has high production as well. Seeing that the Empire is very likely going to try and take Utapau, I'm going to place one of our U-Wings here and one of our Rebel units in Ryloth. 
We'll place the two rebel vanguards over here so at least we make it a good fight. And finally, we're going to place our other rebel unit right here in our rebel base. I mean, if you look at our rebel base, we aren't heavily protected there. <laughs> So if they do find us, we might be in some trouble, but I'm kind of thinking of trying to convince these uh, Empire units to fight us in other locations, not there. Well, there you have it. That was our first round for Star Wars Rebellion. Now, I'm going to ask you guys a couple questions here. First, if you have any suggestions on how to make the Empire cooler or have more variable AI or just any suggestions at all with that let me know and if we think it sounds cool we'll put it into play and try it okay that's the first thing second thing this took me over an hour to record just one turn so you can imagine how long this is going to be as a full series so I am curious if you guys are interested in seeing a full series or if maybe you just want me to do a couple more turns and call it there because I know that you know this will take up a lot of time on the channel, which I'm fine with. I enjoy it, but I want to make sure that you guys are going to enjoy it as well. And I'm showing you how this works, and if you're interested, you can just try it on your own too. So let me know what you think about that as well. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please do tell me if I made any errors with the rules themselves so that I can also make notes, and I'll mention it in the next video. I will see you all at the next stop.